In this video, I'm going to share with you exactly how I choose stocks to sell options in for the wheel strategy. I'm going to take you through my entire daily routine that I go through in order to find what I consider the best opportunities to trade options in. My daily trading routine, well, it actually starts the weekend before. You see, every weekend, I go through the approximately 200 stocks that I'm willing to trade options in looking for opportunities. But here's the thing. In order to get on my watch list, the company must be what I consider a solid, mature, stable, and consistently profitable company. I'm not looking for some company that just had an IPO. I'm not looking for some company that has never made a profit. I'm not looking for a speculative play. I'm looking for something solid that I'll feel comfortable putting my money into even during the next recession and market crash. So before a company makes it on this watch list, I make sure that as long as nothing fundamentally changes with the company or the environment that the company operates in, that I can leave my money invested in the company and feel comfortable owning a small piece of this company for a very long time. Here you see my current list of stocks I'm willing to trade in. Each weekend, I review every single one of these stocks' weekly chart. I go through them one by one, looking for what I consider to be the best technical setups for a bullish trade in the coming week. Here is one of the better technical setups I found this past weekend. It's in the pharmaceutical company, Amgen, ticker symbol AMGN. First, notice I'm looking at the weekly chart. I've drawn a channel that includes Amgen's lows over the past five years, as well as some of its highs. I like these channels because with just a quick glance, no matter just a couple of seconds, I can determine if a stock is trading in the upper or lower part of its trading range. Notice also that my weekly chart has two moving averages. On this platform, the green line is the 50 and the red line is the 200 simple moving average. Now, I actually prefer to use the exponential moving average. However, I've found that some stocks, they tend to follow the simple moving average for their support and resistance. Other stocks, they tend to follow the exponential moving average. At this point, I'm not too concerned that the moving average simple or exponential is the perfect one for this stock. Stock. I'm mainly looking to see where the stock is trading at in relation to its current overall channel. I'm also looking to see if it's in an up or in a downtrend. Here we see that Amgen is in a nice uptrend on the weekly chart. Notice that recently it did make a lower low and a lower high. However, it's interesting that it bounced right off the bottom of this channel. Notice that the lower part of the channel line is drawn perfectly. Back in the fall of 2016, Amgen bounced off this lower channel line. It did that again in the summer of 2019 and the virus crash in early 2020 and now again towards the end of 2021. So I can feel pretty confident that if Amgen did decline from where it's at right now, odds are that it would find support at the bottom of this channel. However, what I like even more is that it also seems to be finding support right around the red 200 moving average. Ironically, it's not too far from that moving average right now. So Amgen is looking pretty good right now for a short put option trade. If it wasn't looking good, then I would have already moved on to the next stop. It's not a perfect technical setup, but it is one that looks interesting to me. Next, I want to determine who's in control. Are the buyers or the sellers in control right now? To do that, I look down at the volume section. Notice that over the past several months, Amgen has been dominated by strong green volume bars. What's even more interesting is that approximately half of those volume bars are higher than the average. So that looks fairly bullish. Since that looks good, I stick with Amgen and I go back up to the top of the chart to look at the candlesticks. There I noticed that last week it was a green up week. Sellers tried to push the stock down, but when it hit the red 200 moving average, buyers came back in and pushed it right back up. Again, this is not the perfect setup, but this is definitely a stock that I'd be willing to sell put options in, most likely out of the money. The problem is that, as you can see here, I already have a position in Amgen, and I don't have any room to add to this position. Now, let me put this on pause here for just a minute. Let me tell you why I don't have enough room to add to this position. Because the common question I get asked is, Randy, how do you handle your position sizing? In earlier years, I had a lot smaller account than I have now. I now have a larger account. It's right at a million dollars. With my current account, I like for my initial position to be around two and a half to 3% of my overall portfolio. That means that if all the put options I've sold were assigned to me, I want that position size to be at most two and a half to 3% of a million dollars or 25 to $30,000. However, my personal rule is that my max position size is actually 5%. So maximum, if all the put options I have sold were assigned to me, I don't want to have spent more than 5% of the million dollars in that one stock. Here you see that I'm in a covered call position in Amgen because I bought 100 shares of it and sold the March 18th 230 call option. 
As you can see here, as a result of selling put options and covered call options at Amgen, Interactive Brokers is telling me that my average price is $208.41. I don't want to go into great detail about this position, but I do want to tell you the reason why I exceeded my 2.5 to 3% position size is because Amgen actually went against us in a pretty big way several months ago. As a result, once I saw it stabilizing, I sold an additional put option. But even with that extra cash secured put option, we're still under our 5% maximum position size. If I did not have a full position in Amgen, I'd be willing to sell an additional put option in it now. So when it comes to Amgen's charts, everything is looking good. The only thing I'd like to see is for Amgen to be at the very bottom of this trading channel. If that was the case and the buyers were still showing straight, this stock would get a very high rating from me on my weekly ratings chart. Here you see a snapshot of my weekend ratings report that I send out to my patrons. This is the top portion of it. My ratings range from a 10, which would be in my opinion, the most ideal time to enter a bullish position, all the way down to a zero, which would not be a position that we would touch. In this weekly post, I only post stocks that I consider to have a rating of at least six. And just so you know, we don't get very many 10s. Maybe once or twice a year, if even that. So a rating of eight for Amgen means that I would definitely be willing to trade the stock if I didn't have a full position in it already. Even stocks that rate a seven and a half or seven are ones that I'd be willing to do a trade in if I didn't have a full position in it already and the stock continued to find nice support over the coming week. So on the weekend, once I rate a stock fairly high, I then keep my eyes on it during the next week if I don't have a full position in it already. Let me show you another stock that we actually did a trade in today. This one wasn't rated that high this past weekend. In fact, I only rated it a six. However, let me show you what I saw that made me feel comfortable selling a new cash secure put option in it today. Here you see the weekly chart of Horizon. Now, based on what I told you earlier about channels, this probably doesn't look very interesting to you. The reason I say that is because Verizon has now broke below the lower part of this trading channel. Because of that, it's not looking very bullish. In fact, it's made a lower low and a lower high on the weekly chart. So you might be thinking, Randy, why in the world would you sell a cash secured put option in Verizon today with this chart? Let me zoom in for you now on this weekly chart. First, let me tell you what I don't like about it. I don't like that Verizon is trading under the green 50 and red 200 moving averages. However, this is a company that I'd feel very comfortable for put into my account. It pays a really nice dividend of, as you can see here, 4.73% annualized. When you couple that with being able to sell covered call options against it, if the put options were assigned to us, I know that we can most likely do very well owning a small piece of this company. It's a company that I'm extremely familiar with. I have my phone service with them. I know how good their customer service is. I know how good their internet connection speeds usually are. I've used them all over the world. I like this company, but I'm not going to trade in Verizon just because I like the company. It's got to fundamentally and technically make sense to me. Fundamentally, I'm good with Verizon. It's not some high growth company, but it's a very stable and well-run company in my opinion. Notice down the volume section, over the past four weeks, there's been nice buying pressure in Verizon. Now notice the candlesticks. Notice that every time the sellers try to push Verizon down, by the end of the week, buyers come back in and push it right back up. That tells me that right now, there's more interest in buying Verizon than in selling it. However, the problem is that it is below those two moving averages. Those moving averages will most likely serve as resistance for it, at least to some degree. Because of that, I put the odds of this being assigned to us as a little higher than if it was trading above those moving averages. That's why I rated the position a six this past weekend. So what did I see today that made me decide to do a trade in Verizon? Let me show you. Now I've switched to the daily chart. Notice first that it was a down day for Verizon. Now being a down day is not a requirement for me, but I do prefer to sell put options on down days. You just get a little more premium for those put options. Next, on a daily basis, I look at charts of stocks that are on my weekend watch list. In addition to those stocks, I'm also looking at any of the 200 stocks that I'm willing to trade in that's experiencing a down day to see if anything interesting might be happening which would present a new opportunity for us to trade on. Here's what I saw in Verizon on the daily chart. Notice how Verizon has been responding to the green 50 moving average on the daily chart. It's been riding this moving average like railroad tracks. Several times over the past three months, it has pushed below the green 50 moving average. However, both times, very quickly, it worked its way back above it. Notice that it appears to be sandwiched in between the green 50 and red 200 moving average. Notice also that the lows from the previous two waves have been higher. Notice that the volume over the past couple of weeks it has been mostly influenced by buyers because six of the past nine days have been up days. I believe that the odds are in our favor that Verizon will be sandwiched in between these two moving averages until it breaks out either above the red 200 moving average or below the green 50 moving average. The question is, which way is it going to break out? Truth be told, 
I don't know. However, I see that it appears to have broken out of the downtrend on the daily chart that it was in. Notice that back on December 16th, at this large green up bar, Verizon broke out on high volume. It shattered through the top of the trading channel that it had been in. It simultaneously broke through the green 50 moving average and ever since then, for the most part, that green 50 moving average has been serving as support for it. Now don't get me wrong, this is not the perfect technical setup. And if I wasn't very comfortable owning Verizon, if it were put into my account, then I would not have done this trade. However, I like the company and I think the odds are in our favor that we will win on this position. As a result, as you can see here in the post that I sent out to my patrons, I sold the April 14th $52.5 cash secure put option. For that, we were paid $1.30 per share. If Verizon continues to hold support here and I have capital available in my account, then I will continue to add to this position. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And if becoming a more profitable option in a stock trader is important to you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. Just so you know, Verizon wasn't my only choice today. You see, as I'm going through all of our potential stocks each day, when I see one of them having a nice strong down day, I add it to my short list as you can see here. I know this may look a bit confusing at first, but let me explain to you what's going on here. On a weekly basis, I rate my top technical setups and post them on my Patreon. But on a daily basis, I look at all the stocks in that 200 stock watch list and do a quick peek at the ones that are experiencing a down day. If a stock is experiencing a down day, it's getting fairly close to an area where I think it might find support, I add it to my daily watch list. It stays on this watch list until either it has a really strong update and is no longer in an advantageous technical position for us to sell put options in it, or we put on a full position size. Notice that today I actually had nine stocks that looked interesting enough to run returns on. Of those nine, only two of the returns and technical setups were good enough for me to potentially move into the trade. Those two were Merck and Verizon. Now let's focus on the Verizon trade that we did today. Notice that we could have received a better return by selling the third Friday of March 52.5 cash secured put option. However, I decided to take a lower annualized return in exchange for more premium up front. As you can see here, the position we entered today in Verizon, it paid us just over a 20% annualized return minus commission if we stay in it through expiration, which is 45 days away. The reason I didn't go with Merck is that as you can see here, we almost have a full position size in it already. Currently, I've sold three March 18th $75 put options. When you run the numbers, if those three put options were all assigned to us, it would amount to a 2.3% position size compared to our overall portfolio. Because of that, I'm willing to sell one more cash secure put in Merck at the $75 strike price. But today, I want to take my first shot at Verizon to diversify our portfolio a little bit more and to give Merck an opportunity to possibly come down over the next couple of days so we can finish off our full position in it. Now that trading has ended for the day, I do a full write-up for my patrons describing what I liked and what I didn't like about the trade setup, why I decided to do the trade, as well as some of the details about the company. Then as you can see here, I set my alerts up so that when the time value of this option drops to 15 cents per share or lower, I'll get an alert to remind me to look at this position to see if I want to close it out or just begin monitoring it for an opportunity to roll it or swap it out for a brand new position in a new company. After that, I log my trades into my personal Excel spreadsheets and the day is done. If you'd like to receive alerts when you trade similar to the ones I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. In order to be a successful options trader, you must know how to successfully navigate through those positions and actually turn them into winners. To help you do that, at the video at the link above, I share my best tips and tricks on how I turn losing positions into winners. Make sure to click on that video if you want to dramatically improve the way you handle losing option positions and quite possibly turn them into winners. Until next time, Happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.